Hello, I'm Mandy Dos Santos, nutritionist, food scientist, and chief kitchen mess maker at Little People Nutrition. Today's video is part of a series we have created in collaboration with the Central Coast Council. These videos address some of the common concerns and questions that childcare educators have around children and eating in an early learning centre environment. Today's video is all about budgeting for the menu plan and food wastage. Budget. It feels like a dirty word when it comes to food and nutrition because we are told we are what we eat. And I wholeheartedly agree with this statement. But in an environment such as a childcare and many early learning environments, budgets are a very real part of the business, even in education. Although the question should be, what is a reasonable figure for a budget of food that is still age appropriate and nutritious? I have heard in many child cares in varying de demographics that the budget has been the same for a few years, around $1.30 per child per day. This number is confronting, but rather than being overcome with emotion, I went into research mode and developed a childcare menu, which when you're using a regular supermarket, would result in approximately a budget of $2.50 per child per day. This is for morning tea, lunch, and afternoon tea. So although $1.30 appears dismal, you can actually offer a diverse range of foods and texture and nutrition for only $2.50 per child per day. I know that is a 90% increase in budget, but it is still only $2.50. How did I reach this? Well, with basic menu ideas such as vegetarian lasagna or pork sanchoi bao, using regular flours and also gluten-free flours when needed, but not exclusively. By following the Australian Dietary Guidelines in regards to vegetables, protein, carbohydrates and fruits. Without those additional funds, there is no way that a child has the ability to be offered or eat a diet that is made using a variety of textures, food groups, a variety of whole foods and less processed options. These are all integral components to developing a positive relationship with food and having a varied learning opportunity of food education at meal times. There are a few key areas that I have seen repeatedly at early learning centres that can save money off their weekly bill. One, looking at buying bulk pantry items from wholesale vendors rather than the everyday supermarket. Think of food service delivery companies. Yes, it might be another order, but it will save you money. Companies such as Bid Food, PFD Food Services, Campbell's Cash and Curry, these are national services, but there are also local services, I'm sure, that do not only the bulk pantry items, but produce and meat, for instance. Two, looking at buying meat from a butcher that delivers. Often it is better quality, but there is also the ability to have the meat quantities in more favorable pack si sizes, such as one kilo, or even in vacuum packed bags that stack better in the freezer for storing. Three, dips and sauces make them rather than buy them. For a dip, you can save up around $2 per dip. A can of chickpeas, lemon salt, pepper, and a dash of oil, blitz, and it's done. You also don't waste the leftover hummus inside the dip container, and you also don't have added plastic waste. Sauces, have some base condiments and spices to mix and match to, to make a spice mix or sauce. Most sauces are salt, sugar, a bulk agent, and water with some kind of flavor. Four, have a look what is being put into your budget. Are there cleaning products and chemicals, Play-Doh and food activities for the rooms, party food, anything that isn't part of the actual meals that you're serving? These items detract from your budget and considering you have a very finite budget, every cent counts. Five, menu plan and exact quantities. In regards to food waste, your menu plan and quantities needed are crucial to food waste and your budget. Although it might seem like a lot of work, it is really helpful to write up your recipes in a formal online document, perhaps even on Excel, so you can have the recipes in quantities per room. It depends how you cook or serve the rooms in the center, but perhaps you have a recipe in terms of the number of children, 10, 20, 30 for instance. You can also order in regards to the projected numbers. It is also impor 
important to be mindful of how your suppliers pack up their products, especially for expensive items such as meat or chicken. If you cook 1.5 kilos of chicken per room of children, think about how your chicken is being delivered so that you can mimic the quantity needed. 200 grams or 500 grams here and there adds up, especially over a week. These documents are also very helpful if the chef is away and someone else needs to cook. Six, wastage documents. A wastage document is also integral to understand how the meals are going in each of the rooms. It needs to be understood that there will be some level of wastage as the children are learning how to eat. This is a long-term document to see any trends in terms of adding uh, vegetables and if they're being eaten. It's long-term, being even months. And I would suggest that you reflect on this document and the information in it monthly and quarterly. It's also important that the way in which the document is filled out is uniform among educators and the rooms to try and take out the subjectivity of whether there is waste. This can be done by weighing or a clear visual volume measurement. Training the educators on how you would like this document to be filled out is vital to gathering the information at a room level for you as the chef. I do hope you found that video helpful. If you would like any additional information, please check out our website or visit one of our social channels. See you next time.